what are the consequences of climate change for uh, for Africa? In fact, Africa has already been suffering from uh, dramatic changes in the ecology arising from droughts and just conventional degradation of the environment. This has been a key feature of Africa. Therefore, long-term climate change is going to worsen situations that are already uh, bad at the moment. Uh, and many of us have believed for a long time that Africa needed to do adaptation to uh, ecological change uh, at, at least 20, 30 years ago. But climate change, we have been living with the problem of climate change since the 70s, the, the uh, Sahelian region. I'm glad now to be able to say that at least the other parts of the world are in the same situation as we have been for the past 20 years. That, that, that requires a global approach. The waters of Lake Chad, for instance, you know, have decreased a great deal um, in the past 10 years. So what does that tell you? Uh, the fact that um, if these communities depend on, 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 on Lake Chad for fishing, and those resources um, get extinct, that is a potential for conflict. If you have variations in rainfall because of, you know, it's happening in Africa now, in so many parts of Africa, there is uh, either, you know, longer dry, uh, uh, dry season, dry periods, that you don't have any rain or very minimal rain. Of course, it, it affects uh, food production, you know, again, because the economies are mostly subsistent. Um, so it has serious implications for food security. We are affected adversely in terms of uh, uh, our food production capabilities. The technology is uh, largely still subsistence and we rely on, uh, on, on, on the weather conditions as they are. Uh, and then sometimes you don't have sufficient rainfall and therefore you can't grow as much as you would have loved to. And uh, this uh, impresses uh, a lot of uh, handicaps on us in terms of trying to produce for ourselves and also the potential that we have that we can feed other nations that have in it. Uh, Africa unfortunately produces less than 2% of the carbon dioxide, but we are the most affected uh, through this uh, global warming and climate change. Land degradation leading to desertification is occurring in the land-rich soil Africa. Then that's a, a major threat that must be really taken into account in order to combat the food crisis. And finally, we should take into account the fact that worldwide, but specifically in Africa, the geography of poverty and endemic famine is the same as land degradation. Then if we want to really go deep and tackle the, the challenges at its roots and have medium and long-term strategies, we should therefore focus on uh, sustainable land management. Adapting to climate change will require breeding new crops and therefore putting agriculture at the center of the development strategies of these countries, especially in terms of using new agricultural technologies, will be very, very essential. And this is where areas like biotechnology become important because the time frame for developing new products is actually pretty short. And so they need techniques that can enable them to develop new products fairly quickly. And one obvious area is, for example, drought-tolerant crops. Uh, and Africa is already working closely with a number of donors. If you're talking, about, most countries are talking about granting aid to developing countries for uh, environmental sustainability. But I don't think that is the real thing to do. But the real thing is to do is to build capacity for each country to be able to support themselves according to their ecological diversity. My agency is really focusing on alerting the international community on the challenge of urbanization, on this demographic transition, that not only should we cope with climate change, we must also cope with the demographic transition. Human beings have become urban species, you know, so we have to plan for this new reality. The, the argument that we don't uh, emit as much as Europe, or as much as India, as much as China, doesn't really hold any uh, listen. Everybody has to come to the table. So that's the first solution. Um, agree to the UN Convention on, on Climate Change and then the binding protocols and then do something, you know, within your countries. Um, the economy has to be a bit greener. Gare au programme que nous sommes en train de développer pour la consolidation euh, de la politique de diversification de l'économie gabonaise, 
mais aussi euh, de la consolidation, de la conservation euh, dans les pays du bassin du Congo. Et donc, euh, l'objectif euh, premier euh, du ministère dont j'ai la charge et du gouvernement de la République est de développer les capacités à même de nous permettre de faire appliquer les principes d'aménagement, de gestion durable de nos écosystèmes, mais en même temps, si vous voulez, de faire en sorte que euh, l'exploitation de ces ressources naturelles puisse générer des revenus euh, à même de nous permettre de résoudre la problématique que vous savez tous, qui est ce, ce, euh, celle de la pauvreté. Si les pays dans cette région, où le sit, Congo Forest est assisté à protéger ces forêts, so that they don't cut them, because they are les the trees are serving not only the Congolese, but also the people of the world by trapping that carbon, then of course these people would be, uh, we would be doing some fair compensation to them for serving for the forest's uh, work that the forests are doing for all of us. Congo Basin Forest Fund. And this fund has already received support from the British government and from the region, Norwegian government, each giving $100 million each. With this kind of help, surely we would begin to see a partnership, a cooperation between those who have polluted and those who are likely to be victimized, working together not only to stop the emissions, but also now to protect these giants of forest that are the major carbon sink for the world.